Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name's Erin and today we are doing my October TBR. Alright, so before we get too far into this, my little characters have been fighting monsters now for quite a while and I have a few more months to finish this challenge, so let's see where I'm at so far. Okay, two of the five months down, and I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm at. I definitely still haven't read any mystery thriller, so hopefully those will be coming up. October's a good month, but I still don't think they're on this list. We'll see. So there were a few books I did not finish in September that I'm going to push into October. And at first I was a little bit concerned, but again, it's one of those things where I have to be okay with reading less now that work has started back up and is in full swing. The first two books on my TBR are ones being pushed from last month. That is The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is the second book in The Lord of the Rings. Um, right now I'm about halfway through. I've got my little magnet donut bookmark. I love the magnet bookmarks. I don't know if y'all use these, but once I found these, I feel like my life is complete in bookmark sense. Um, but yeah, I'm about halfway through that, so I'm hoping to finish it in like the first three or four days of October. I also had Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury on my October list, and I have not even started this, but it is a short one, so again, I'm hoping that first few weeks of October, I can really knock this one out and move into some fresh TBR picks. Alright, so I'm very excited about this next one. That is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wayne-Jones. So I have not ever seen this movie. I watched a lot of the Studio Ghibli films, Love Spirited Away and Princess Mononoke, but I haven't ever seen this one. A few months ago I started re-watching a lot of those movies and I decided that before I watched Howl's Moving Castle I wanted to read the book because I prefer to read the book first. From what I've learned since then, this book is very different from the movie, but I think that makes me even more excited to do a comparison. So in this book we follow Sophie who is the oldest of three daughters and goes out to seek her fortune, but she gets on the bad side of a witch who turns her into an old lady. The only way to get her life back on track is to go find Howl's moving castle. Other than that, I don't really know anything about it. It sounds great. I'm the oldest of three kids, so I know the whole seeking your fortune, uh, proving yourself aspect of the oldest. Felt that one. So yeah, I'm really excited. This will probably be one of the first books I read this month after I kind of finish my leftovers. After that, I have a NetGalley read, which I should have read a while ago because I think it comes out maybe this month. And that is In the Deep by Loreth Ann White. So this seems very thrillery, which is going to be great for October. I would like to preface this by saying I am not a scary book kind of girl or a scary movie kind of girl, but... I feel like maybe this will toe the line just enough that I can really enjoy it. We follow Ellie, who has finally found her Prince Charming, Martin, and she's had a rough life prior to that. Her daughter passed away, she's been through a bad divorce, she's had a few breakdowns, and so Martin just kind of seems like a highlight of her life. It sounds like she's finally feels like she's in a good spot. Fast forward, Martin is dead, and Ellie seems relieved instead of heartbroken. So obviously people think that's a little sus, and she is on the top of the list for questioning, but it seems like there is a lot more to this story. Maybe things like adultery, betrayal, revenge, even some like psychological warfare between the two sounds very intense and not usually what I would read, but something I'm still interested in nonetheless. So I'll let you know how that goes. I checked and it is actually going to be published this month on the 26th. This next book I am both excited and not excited to read, and that's Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls. I haven't read this book in so long because in general I don't like rereading books that make me cry unless I'm in the right mood for it. And uh, this book is definitely going to make me cry. The movie makes me cry. The book makes me cry. Just all around. Anytime there's a dog involved, you know it's going to go straight to your heart. But yeah, I, I feel like it's time to reread this one. I also am going to be checking out Birdsong by Sebastian Fox. It's on my general list of like 200 classics to read. It's one that I know almost nothing about. It follows two different timelines. 
um, a granddaughter and her grandfather. So it kind of goes back and forth between the two. The grandfather was serving in World War I, and the granddaughter is now living in the 1970s and discovers two of his journals. One is in like a coded language that she doesn't understand, and the other is just a general journal of his and his kind of time and survival throughout the war. Her interest is piqued with that first journal that she can't decode right away. Um, from my understanding, and it just kind of goes back and forth as she's discovering her grandfather's story and kind of living out her own. After that, I have Monsters of Men by Patrick Ness. This is the final book in the Chaos Walking trilogy, and it is about time that I finish off some series. I just keep starting. I won't tell you much about this one. I will tell you a little bit about the first book in the series, which is The Knife of Never Letting Go. In that first book, we follow Todd, who lives in a world where everybody can hear everybody else's thoughts. There is no way to hide anything. There is no way to block anything out. It is just a constant stream of everybody's ideas, thoughts, feelings, all of it. And also in this world, there are no females, if I remember right. So it's just a bunch of men with thoughts all out there. Todd one day eventually meets Viola, who is from a different planet, and her uh, spaceship like crashed lands on his planet, and he can't hear her thoughts. And so that's a whole like novel thing to him, and so he's very just like taken by her. So the first few books are them kind of trying to navigate his world, trying to figure out what happened to her spaceship and the rest of her people. There are different species on the planet that Todd lives on that are battling as well. And so by the third book, you're pretty well into just a bunch of battles going down. Everybody is against everybody. Nobody knows what's going on. So I'm excited to see where this one picks up and how the series ends. I would say overall, this is not one of my like top series of all times, but I, I think the idea is very unique and I like Patrick Ness's writing style. So while this wasn't necessarily at the top of my list, it is definitely one I'm excited to finish and check off my list. After that, I have a nice a little biography. Who is Rosa Parks? I've read a few of these. I think I have probably six or seven of this series on my shelf. And so this will be a nice little break, a good way to just kind of refresh and maybe learn a few things that I didn't know before. I found that every time I read these, I know most of the information, but there's like one or two little hidden facts that I had never heard. Here we have Codename Varied. This is by Elizabeth Wayne. Um, this book, love it. If you want a good like historical fiction, intrigue kind of story, this could be the one for you. It starts out very, 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 very slow. So just keep that in mind. But the end is phenomenal. It completely changed it from a middle of the road read to like a top historical fiction. I'm excited to reread this. I haven't reread it and I feel like it's definitely one of those books that I can learn a lot of new things the second time I read it. We follow a spy named Verity who has been captured by the Nazis in World War II and she is forced to give away her secrets. So you, the first like three-fourths of the book is her slowly telling her story as a British pilot, and you kind of meet some of her friends, one of her very close friends, and almost at the very end of the book, you switch to her friend's point of view. A lot of secrets are revealed, their fates in this are revealed, and just the amount of things that flip and twist and turn at the very end. Again, highly recommend if you're into historical fiction. The last book on my list is the biggest chunk of a book I have ever read, probably. Actually, maybe not, but it's still very intimidating, and that is The Shadow Rising. It's the fourth book in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, and I just showed this off in my haul, but look at that. Look at that. It's giant. Yeah. I have about a hundred pages left of The Dragon Reborn, which is the third book. I'm going to finish it by October. I'm going to give myself about 10 days of a break and start this probably over my fall break. Um, and hopefully half a month is enough time to finish this chunk. One of the good things I will say about this series is that I have not been getting tired of. I was worried because I don't usually read series back to back that I would find myself just not wanting to go into the next book and I haven't felt that way yet. So I'm hoping I can keep that up throughout the whole 14 book set. This is only book four and 
the size increase and I've heard some of the middle books are kind of where it takes a dip. I'm getting a little nervous, but I do have a good Discord group to go along with this, so I'm hoping that will be enough motivation. Let's get our TBR pile going. All right, y'all, here we go. Pretty good, bulky list. Not very exciting as far as uh, colors go for these spines, but I think this is going to be another good reading month. The few things that has been good about 2020 is the fact that I've been reading a lot. I think it's just been a coping mechanism, but let me know what you're reading in October. I would love to have more books to add to my ever-growing TBR. If I've ever read Codename Verity. I have not found anybody who's read that aside from my sister. We love it, but I want to talk to someone about this book. So please go read Codename Verity and let me know what you think. Maybe add it to your October TBR. Otherwise, have a great day and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.